The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus went to his hometown and his disciples accompanied him. With the coming of the Sabbath, he began teaching in the synagogue, and most of them were astonished when they heard him. They said, Where did the man get all this? What is this wisdom that has been granted him, and these miracles that are working through him? This is the carpenter, surely, the son of Mary, the brother of James and Joseph and Jude and Simon. His sisters too, are they not here with us? And they would not accept him. And Jesus said to them, A prophet is only despised in his own in his own country, among his own relations, and in his own house. And he could work no miracle there, though he cured a few sick people by laying his hands on them. He was amazed at their lack of faith. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So dear brothers and sisters, we began our Eucharist today by calling to attention our vocation to be a prophet. And uh, we also paused a little while to reflect what does it mean to be a prophet of God. In the Bible, if we were to look for a hint of an answer of what it means to be a prophet, we have many examples there. It's enough to look at the Old Testament and to see that the prophets basically cover, I think, almost two-thirds of what is, what is in the Old Testament. Even from the book of Kings itself, you already have the likes of Samuel, you have the likes of Elijah, you have the likes of Elisha. Then as you move further on, you have all these great prophets, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, Amos, Hosea, so on and so forth. Now, all of them are people of great renown, people of great respect. And uh, oftentimes the, the prophet has this renown because the prophet does great signs. He does great miracles. Elijah and Elisha could even raise someone from the dead. And you talk about Isaiah, you talk about Jeremiah, and these were courageous prophets who at times even defied the kings and even the religious leaders of their day defied them and called them to repentance because these people who were supposed to be close to God, they had done precisely the opposite. They had strayed from God. And so these prophets, chosen by God, they would go and they would proclaim the word of God to them and told them, you need to repent. Repent so that you do not meet disaster. If you come back to the Lord, all will be well, but you need to repent. This is the prophet as the Bible presents to us. But of course, when we look at our own situations, the first criteria, perform miracles, raise the dead, from, raise, raise the, raise the dead to life again, this is something beyond 99.9% .9 of us. We can't do this. We don't have that power, so to speak. And as for someone to speak for God, to call to people to repentance. Now that is something that we need to think a little bit deeper on. Are we persons who can speak for God or not? This is really the essence of who a prophet is supposed to be. A spokesperson for God. That means as the prophets of old called people to walk the straight and narrow path of God, we who are called to be prophets, we are also asked to be people who walk in the straight and narrow of God and encourage our brothers and sisters to also to keep on that path of the straight and narrow to the Lord. That is what we are called to be as prophets, actually. You know, nothing of that miracles and all that, but really people who stand for God and speak for God. And so, of course, if we think about the church as the prophet of God and the church is made up of living stones of you and I, 
If all of us are truly faithful to that prophetic vocation that we have received, imagine the state of the church we find before us. If every one of us, in our own little way, in our own circumstances, we try to walk the straight and narrow of God and we try to encourage each other to keep to that path, this is what we call renewal. This is what we call uh, a new Pentecost, almost. Now, one you might be asking, why is it therefore that we are all called? Why is it that God doesn't call maybe a certain people um, as he used to do in those days? If I look at my own situation, you know, what, 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 what is it in me that, that qualifies me to be a prophet? Well, first and foremost, if we were to look at the prophets of old, you find the same circumstances as well. Not all of them were the most educated of people. Not all of them were priests or, you know, even like people who were very super religious and super pious. Like the prophet Amos, for example, he was someone who was working um, as, as a, it's almost like a lumberjack, you know, in layman terms today. He was like a lumberjack. He was, a, he was someone who, who felt trees. But it was precisely that person that God called. And when you talk about someone like Jeremiah at the beginning of the book, he says, I'm a young person. I'm a young man. Who is going to listen to me? But it is precisely in such moments of weakness that God calls a person to be a prophet. Now, I'm sure as we all hear all of these things, we will feel a, you know, something which is beyond our reach. Who am I to be a prophet? Who am I to prophesy? And this is where we need to also bear in mind another point. One becomes a prophet not because one is qualified. One becomes a prophet not because he or she is endowed with you know, supernatural knowledge and, and all that thing. But it is because we prophesy now in the name of Jesus. You see, brothers and sisters, I spoke about prophets all coming from most of the names that I mentioned were all in the Old Testament. But in the New Testament, there is only one. Do you remember who that prophet is? Silence. John the Baptist, yes, John the Baptist. But after John the Baptist comes, that's it. That line of prophets, it suddenly disappears. Or did it disappear? Not true, actually. John the Baptist was the prophet, the spokesman of God. He proclaimed the one true God that had taken on flesh. The Son of God who, made, who was incarnate and walked among us, the Emmanuel. John the Baptist proclaimed, here is the Lamb of God. And he pointed to Jesus. Now Jesus, of course, being the Son of God, but also Jesus is the prophet par excellence. No other prophet can compare with Jesus. And the reason why Jesus proclaims John the Baptist to be the greatest of all prophets is because John the Baptist had the privilege, had the grace, had the blessing to behold the Son of God himself, the Messiah himself. That is his claim to greatness. But Jesus is, he is the way, he is the truth, he is the life. He is the ultimate straight and narrow that leads to God. And that is why Jesus is the prophet. And we who are part of his church, when we prophesy, we don't prophesy out of our own ingenuity, we don't prophesy our opinions. We prophesy the path that leads to God. We prophesy the way, the truth, and the life. We prophesy Jesus himself. So if we are called to be prophets, and if we wish to fulfill that vocation of to be a prophet, then we need to be disciples of Jesus. We need to have that relationship with the Lord we must know who it is that we are prophesying. The prophets of old, they came from diverse backgrounds, but they had one thing in common. They were all men and women of God. They were very close with the Lord. And if we are close to the Lord, if we have a relationship, and beyond that relationship, we have a great love for God, I would dare say that our lives cannot be but a living prophecy of God. Testament to who the Lord actually is. 
by our way of life, by our way of by the way by how we speak, by what we do, the decisions we do, everything can be a prophetic gesture pointing others to the kingdom of God. So, brothers and sisters, is this challenging or not? Yes, it is challenging. But we are not asking us to rely on our own strengths, on our own capabilities. But rather, as the psalmist says, our eyes are fixed on the Lord till He show us His mercy. We need to focus on the Lord. We need to go back to Him. We need to open our hearts and allow ourselves to be filled with His Spirit. When we are filled with the love of God, when we are filled with His wisdom, that is where our prophecy really takes shape. Prophecy then ceases to become just words on a page, but prophecy becomes life. Prophecy becomes living flesh. Prophecy becomes tangible because we see each and every one of us, we are prophets. Now, one last thing, one last point that I would like to point out, and it's also very apparent in the gospel, are prophets listened to? Are prophets welcomed? No. This is something that we have to be prepared for. Prophets are seldom welcomed because the ways of God are often at odds with the ways of the world. And many people are drawn to the ways of the world. For someone to come all of a sudden and say, you're going the wrong way, that is something that many people do not like to hear. So the prophets, they suffered that fate. Many times, they were rejected. They were rejected by even those who were closest to them. Jesus himself was rejected by those who came from his own village. They would look at him. Hey, you're the carpenter's son. Who are you to lecture me about the word of God? And perhaps in our own ways, in our own situations, we might have had families, loved ones, even friends who turn away from us because we have chosen to embrace this faith of following Christ. But that is another matter altogether. Though we may be rejected, but together we testify to one thing that is true. We bear witness to what God has worked in us, and that is what we have to testify. Of course, we testify with love. We do not testify to condemn, we do not testify to make a person feel sad, to belittle the other person, but always we come because we want to share the love of God. We want to testify to that love of God, that love of God has for all, not just people in the Catholic Church, not just people who are Christians, but to all, we are testifying to that. And God uses us, weak as we are, fragile as we are, it is not up to us. It doesn't depend on our, our holiness, but it depends on God who is true, on Jesus who is the Word of God. That is what we are called to bring to others. So dear brothers and sisters, today in our Eucharist, we are called to, we are reminded to be prophets. And we know that to be prophets, we cannot be prophets on our own strength. So in this Eucharist, as we receive the Lord, let us open our hearts and open ourselves to God's Spirit working in us. And may the Lord strengthen this vocational calling to be prophets in all of us. Amen.